Hello, Performance Ninjas, and welcome to a new lab about Python branch mispredictions. And today, we will take a look at how you can replace frequently mispredicted branches with lookup tables. I've done an introduction on CPU branch prediction in one of my earlier videos when I was talking about bad speculation metric. So I will not repeat myself here, but you are more than welcome to go and watch that video. The bottom line here is that if you see a high value for the bad speculation metric, it is likely that there are branches in your application that are frequently mispredicted. And so in this lab assignment, you will learn how to get rid of those branches by using lookup tables. This is the first video in our branch list saga, so let's go. Let's measure the baseline and collect top-down metrics as we usually do. And now I will collect the top-down. All right, and you see it immediately points us that a large percentage of execution slots were wasted due to the branch mispredicts. Now let's rerun the top-down analysis again, but this time I will also add minus run sample option, which will additionally run the profile, and in my case it's Linux Perf. And what Linux Perf will do in this case, it will sample on the branch mispredict event and will reveal what branches contribute to this high value of the branch mispredict metric. So as you can see, Linux Perf was fired, it collected performance profile, and now let's take a look inside. And so uh, Linux Perf collected many different events, but we are interested in branch mispredicts, so that's what we will click on. And then you can see that 100% of all branch mispredicts happened in our histogram function. Well, and that's actually not surprising at all, right? It is actually what we expected. And now let's take a look inside the histogram and see what branches are frequently mispredicted. And okay, there is a lot on this picture. Uh, first of all, there is a correspondence between the source code and the assembly generated for it. And then on the left, there is a number of samples attributed to this particular assembly instruction. Let's turn off the source code for a minute. And you see, those are all the branches that are generated for our map to bucket function. And also, as you can see, all of them are frequently mispredicted. And so all of them contribute to our high branch misprediction metric. You can study this profile by yourself which I'm sure will be the useful exercise for you. But let me go back to the source code now. Now that we know the bottleneck in this code, let's think about how we can solve this. And I guess you immediately started thinking about calculating the bucket based on the value V, but notice that the boundaries of each bucket are actually prime numbers, right? So you cannot compute the index so easily. All right, so next I will show the solution for this lab assignment, which uses lookup table to get rid of all those branches. However, if you still want to work on it, it's now a good time to pause the video, go to the code of the lab assignment and try to implement it yourself. Having said that, here is the solution. We map the value V into a particular bucket by simply doing a lookup into our buckets array. And so this value v now actually becomes an index to this large buckets array. And so we simply read that memory location and return the value. It's that simple. And of course, also a little bit of error handling code just to prevent out of bound accesses to our buckets array. Right. So now let's remeasure uh, our solution. I use uh, check speed up 
.py script to do that. We can observe almost 8 times speed up, which is great, but let's also rerun top-down analysis one more time to make sure that we actually got rid of those branch mispredicts. And indeed, you can see that the value for this metric almost becomes zero. Now, I don't want to make a false impression here, right? I'm not saying that branches are always bad. In fact, most of the times, it's actually the other way around, right? So you almost always better go with branches and go branchless only in those places where the CPU branch predictor frequently fails. When you implement a branchless algorithm, you effectively convert the control flow dependency into a data flow dependency. So for a simple yes or no branch, a CPU can speculate on one of the two outcomes and it has a good chances of being right. But what's more important, it can still make forward progress even though it is on a speculative path. But with branchless version and when you have a data flow dependency, you effectively stop all the speculation, right? So you see that a CPU doesn't know what will be the value loaded from this memory location of bucket sub v, right? It cannot speculate on data because the range of the values is just huge, right? It's not just true or false, it can return zero or it can return one million, right? The CPU has no means to predict the value of that load, right? And so it has to wait on that data. So here is the trade-off. For our baseline version with branches, our best case scenario is when we correctly predicted to which bucket our value we will go. And let's say that in this case, our latency is zero, right? So we make the prediction, it turned out that we are right, and we just return the value. But if we were wrong, then we take a branch mispredict penalty, which is around 17 cycles on modern CPU architectures. And also, as you may have guessed, we could make the two wrong predictions in the same function call, right? So for example, imagine that, okay, our prediction is that uh, value V will go to the bucket number one, right? And oh no, we got it wrong. So then we have uh, five buckets left, right? Number two, number three, number four, five, and six. So, okay, uh, suppose that now we guessed that, okay, it will go to the bucket number five. And eventually it turned out that the bucket number four was taken, right? So this, you see how we can be wrong multiple times during the same function call, right? And this horrible for performance, but unfortunately, this is what happens frequently when you have a random data. Now, let's take a look at our branchless version. Instead of an old branch, we have a new branch. And you will ask, well, Dennis, what is the whole point of this transformation? And I will tell you, yes, we have a new branch, but it's a different branch. It's actually a perfectly predicted branch since it always goes in one direction, right? So in other words, it's always taken, right? And so the CPU treats this branch as it's not even there. Yes, it still has to go through the execution units. However, branch predictor is trained for handling this branch. And so it becomes super cheap. <laughs> so you see, not all branches created equal. And so you should only replace those branches that are, are actually poorly predicted by a CPU. Let's finish the analysis of our branchless version. And okay, we have this load from the buckets array, which is relatively small and will uh, likely fit into the L1 cache on all, on all of the modern chips nowadays. And so the, the latency of the L1 cache access on modern chips is roughly four cycles. So this is actually our latency of, the, of, of our branchless version, which is four cycles, right? And if you remember 
the baseline version, right? We had the zero uh, cycles latency in the best case, but uh, 17 cycles latency in the worst case, right? So having four cycles for the average uh, worst and the best case um, scenario is actually uh, quite a good trade-off in this case. Okay, I hope you get the idea of this transformation. Also, I have a few bonus exercises for you. First, try to play with the input data. For example, check which version will be better if all the input values will fall into the one of the buckets, right? Then, check which version will be better if all of the values will fall into two buckets. And so play with this distribution of the input data and see what will happen. Second, think about how you would solve this lab assignment if the range of possible values for variable B will be much, much bigger, say from zero to 10,000, right? So the problem in this case will be to allocate and populate such a huge array. And so think about it and post your results in the comments under this video. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next lab assignment. Take care.